Auto Line at CES is brought to you by Borg Warner, ETOS, and by Gentex. Thomas Irwan is with ETOS. If you've watched our videos from CES, you've known that we've talked with this guy before. Exactly one year ago. One year ago, exactly year. right. But we got to keep coming back to talk to you guys because you keep innovating. You come out with new exactly. products. Exactly. You got three things that you want to tell me today. Yes. Well, let's go through with them. So we have three things, but let's start maybe uh, with the ADAS one. Okay. So we have a ADAS specific middleware. And middleware is typically a part of software which you cannot see so well. But it's... Even the name is boring. Yeah, it's boring. Uh, we call it EDFS, <laughs> uh, which is maybe less boring. It's called um, ETA's Deterministic Middleware Solution. Why is that important? Um, Determinism is important because let's imagine you are an ADAS developer and you would like to develop a nice ADAS function, for example, for an autom uh, automated emergency brake. You know, the one when your car suddenly breaks. Right. Um, it saves a lot of uh, lives, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, then you might have a scene where it suddenly breaks in a tunnel. And then you bring the scene back to your developer in the lab, and he needs to find out why the car breaks, even though there was nothing. And for that, you need the deterministic recomputer, the de deterministic behavior. And that is one of the key and unique features our middleware has, and that saves a lot of time, um, ensures uh, a deterministic recompute, and it ensures also that uh, you really know what happened in the field, so you can do a forensic uh, recompute, we call it. So it's able to go in, look at the data, and say, ah, this is what triggered the brain. Yeah, so basically it will replay the data exactly as it was, so without changing anything, and then the developer can find out what went wrong. Okay, so I said middleware is kind of boring sounding, but yeah. critically important. But critically important, because without that, um, you would take ages. Uh, think about the, you would like to have this scene always recorded in real time again. So you go out in the field, drive around in the same tunnel, try to reproduce the same scene. It's literally impossible. So you need a simulation for that. And this is what our middleware uh, supports. So how does it work that it figures out, okay, I've, I've gone back in and found out where the problem is? Yeah, so this is a task of the developer actually to, to find that. Okay. But the, the tool we're basically providing is that you can rely on the the recomputed version that it's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So this is really important for development and yes. yes. Saves yes. them a lot of time by saying, here's exactly. the data you need. Exactly. Now you go figure it out, but here's the data. Exactly. exactly. Got it. Okay. So the second topic um, is actually one of my favorite ones because everyone is talking about AI. Right. Even me. Even you. And um, typically we talk about Gen AI with large language models and, uh, but we are in automotive and in automotive we have deeply embedded stuff. We have microcontrollers with limited resources, so we cannot just put large language models into that limited or restricted environment. And therefore we created a tool, we call it the embedded AI coder, where we can convert a pre-trained neural network into a C code, a safe automotive grade C code, which you can flash directly on a microcontroller and it runs with very limited resources. So the, the one uh, we were demonstrating to you is has only 12 kilobytes of using memory. Which is nothing. Which In is nothing. In today's world, that's nothing. Exactly. And you saw also how fast it was booting. Mm -hmm. you know, so we can boot uh, within three seconds, four seconds. It's up and running. And um, yeah, I think the, there's a growing need of uh, bringing trained models into, into the car for whatever use case. And most likely, we always will have resource limits and we need more um, yeah, more of these tools to, to shrink it, to optimize it to the chips. And this is our offering, what we what we can do with our embedded AI code. Mm -hmm. And that's available right now too? So it, that's... Or is that coming? That's coming. Um, it's already a... So we plan to have a SaaS offering, a software as a service. Mm -hmm. It's basically kind of web interface where you can just upload your uh, pre-trained model and get out the file which you flash directly to the microcontroller. Very interesting. So this year though, you'll have it available? So that will be available this year. Yeah? Okay. So you saw, uh, it, so the demo is just to show the principle, but there are many use cases um, already uh, in the field existing. For example, the 
what you might know, the ultrasonic parking system, for example. Mm -hmm. Ultrasonic parking system, mm -hmm. the ones beep, 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 yeah, you yeah, approach yeah. something. Right. Um, if you look to this, to the classical ultrasonic system, you have a, an, a software which is pretty complex because you need to make a high classification, low objects, high objects, curbstone, wall, whatever, all kinds of objects in a rule-based software. And of course, nowadays, you just do that with AI trained models, but then they are typically large. And with our embedded AI coder, we brought it small to an embedded device, and uh, that is already uh, serious uh, ready. That's impressive that it runs on such a little bit. Yeah, That's it. yeah. exactly. Okay, one, two, down. One, Number two. Three. So the, the third one is a completely different area um, in di diagnostics. So imagine you are a fleet provider. And as fleet provider, what is your main goal is uptime, <laughs> up let your fleet running. So every um, downtime is cost. You lose time and you lose uh, money. Um, so with our solution, we detect basically based on a pattern recognition, also with AI, of so-called de uh, defect trouble codes. We basically predict the next defect trouble code, which is coming up. And then in the combination of this defect trouble codes, we might predict what kind of issue is coming up. And then we can set even already the root cause. We can automatically analyze the root causes, set maybe repair instructions, even order maybe spare parts in advance, whatever is necessary to reduce or minimize the downtime of the fee provider. And this is all done by also by AI um, as a service, which you can integrate, by the way, in um, all kinds of cloud environments in your fleet management system. So it's a cloud-based service, uh, which you can get from us. Fleet managers are going to love predictive maintenance. Yes. That takes all the uncertainty out of it. Make sure their trucks and vans are up and by. Exactly. And and imagine even if uh, the car at the end needs to go to the dealership, uh, you might reduce the time for repair because everything is set already. So maybe the repair instruction is already there. The step out is already there. You know already what you have to do instead of start searching uh, and so on. So Thomas, I know the viewers are going to say, OK, that's great for fleet managers. What about for us everyday people? Why can't I have this in my car? Yeah, I believe this is a feature OEMs should offer also to end users because what we see is that end users more and more also like this remote maintenance capabilities. Because what the user expects is like the smartphone, right? No one would like to go with a smartphone uh, to the dealership because there's a critical bug fix or something to maintain. We just wait overnight, it will update automatically. Same expectation uh, is currently with the SDV also regarding review maintenance. So the, the predictive maintenance feature, is that coming to or is so that out now? This is what we're offering to, to the OEMs at the end. I think um, if they if they do it well, uh, also safe and secure, um, then we they can also offer that to end users. And this would work with any fleet management system that's already as So device. this, this uh, what I'm talking, we call it like most likely repair that will work for, for any kind of, uh, with any fleet management system. Very interesting stuff. We always got, uh, come up with clever ideas of what you can do with software. Yeah, so and the, now the software is with AI. Yeah, exactly. So the small things sometimes solve the biggest problems, right? So sometimes are the small things, and uh, it's quite interesting always to think what kind of problem to solve our customers really have. That's right. Taos, thanks for your time again. I always love getting you updated with what you're doing this year. Yes. Thank you.